Right, so an update on the 996 MOT. So I took it for an MOT last week um, and um, I've heard some horror stories. I think it's Mike Buckley. Mike um, messaged on YouTube and said he'd had all sorts of stuff uh, done to his when it went in. Um, and I was a little bit worried thinking, oh my God, I don't know, I'm quite nervous around the MOT time anyway, so I think I've said that before. So anyway, I took it in last week, uh, left it in there, and the only thing that I was probably worried about was the uh, rear number plate lights, which have been playing up for a while. Um, so but Jack fixed those, he took the bumper off, uh, and they were just not connected properly. Um, so that was one thing less to worry about. Anyway, I took it in, um, went to pick it up, I was, I was a little bit nervous, but it has passed. Yes! Um, so it passed, there's two advisories, um, and I'm not particularly worried about either of them. Now, if I was a guy taking a car on a track, or um, if I drove around like a maniac, maybe I would, um, I would get them fixed. But, uh, I'll tell you what they are. So the first one is, there is surface corrosion on the rear shock absorbers. They're not leaking. Um, there's no other problem with them. Um, they've just got surface rust on them. And that surface rust has happened because it was, it lived by the sea. The previous owner uh, who had it, it was by the sea for a while and it didn't get used much. So there's quite a few things that have a little bit of surface rust on them. Um, but they're actually fine. So I'm not worried about that. If there was a leak, if there was, you know, it, I, it was all over the place from the back, then I would just go get them changed. Um, Cause then it'd become a safety thing. Um, and then there is a tiny, tiny movement. So the guy said, look, I have to properly, properly look at it and think, is that movement, is it? And then he decided there was a minuscule amount of movement in the steering wheel, uh, steering linkage. Um, so which is kind of not the next bit from the track rod end, it's the next bit after that. Um, and he said it's barely noticeable, I'm not going to get that fixed. Now a lot of that is, some people might say that I'm some kind of philistine, I'm not uh, keeping my 911 exactly as it should be, but what it means is I can still own one. I'm not going to spend hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pounds because my truck always don't look very nice. I don't have to look at them. They do exactly what they're supposed to do and they're not dangerous. Steering the same. I don't notice anything in the steering. The steering seems sharp, direct, light. Um, not light, but weighted, quite right. Um, but the problem is, um, no, there isn't a problem. Um, so if I was to get those fixed, it would literally be hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pounds. Um, probably going over a thousand pounds. Money that I don't have. And when you go down that road of anything that comes up, I must get it fixed, then that's when you end up going, it's a money pit, and that's why I shouldn't have a 911. But when you think about, well, is it detracting from my day-to-day -day enjoyment of the car? Then you start thinking, well, actually, I should probably get that fixed. Or, you know, if something happens and you think it's just not economical, just list it, sell it. Uh, but it depends how much money you put into the car. Now, if it's if you put a massive wad of money into a car, and then anything that comes up, you keep getting fixed. But then it's just a it's just a money pit. It's a hole that you just keep feeding. And whereas I've not invested initially a lot of money, it's not a perfect example. And I'm just spending the money on it that keeps my enjoyment as if where it should be, and where. I expected it to be when I bought the car. Now, something in my eye. Now, there's, a, there's also a problem with that, something I've noticed since I've had the MOT done. Um, in the first year I had it, not first year, so when I got the MOT done last year, last November, November 2019, I would have had it about seven months, and I'd done maybe two and a half thousand miles, something like that. Um, 
because my, my work wasn't very far and at the weekends I would be in a different car because I'd have my children with me and my wife with me um, and it meant that it got less sort of work, uh, less use for journeys in and around unless I specifically went out for a drive which I did do quite often um, but since that last MOT I've, I was shocked to learn that I've only done 1,700 miles in a year. Now, there are reasons for that, because I quit my job in December last year, so I, um, I drove it a little bit. Uh, I'd have to look for reasons to drive, drive it, so I would just go when I had time. I would literally go out for a drive by myself. Uh, and which is lovely, which is exactly what I'm doing now. But then um, I started my new job in February, which meant um, I was working in London, so I didn't need the car to go anywhere. And then in March, lockdown happened, so I wasn't going anywhere at all. And that's when the car sat there, I think the first time around it sat there for six to eight weeks and then it would sit there for two weeks at a time, three weeks at a time. Um, so it's it's hardly had any use at all, which is bad because I wanted to use it regularly and I don't want it to be one of those things where I, things like IMS bearings and main seal bearings and things like that, they're less likely to go wrong if you're using the car. Um, and I did look through the history again, and the IMS on this was changed. Uh, 25,000, 26,000 miles ago. But that was eight years ago. Um, so I worry a little bit. Um, so I, I do need to use it. I mean, I'm worried to the point that I think about it. I don't actually do anything about it. I just use the car. Um, so. There's nothing I can do about that, drive it more, unless, you know, I take time out at lunchtime or every day when I'm working from home to go out for a drive, but my lunchtime is my outdoor exercise where I go for a walk. Um, anyway, so that's, that's the update on the Porsche. I'm really happy, 12 months MOT, um, it's recently had a few bits done, it's got the new um, water bottle, coolant bottle fitted, which I need to top off actually. Um, so. We're kind of in a good place, such wood, with this car. Um, I drove the, so, and then to the 912, which I drove earlier, and you'll have heard about that, so I'll put the video up by then. Um, and I feel like something fell off it. It was uh, all a bit sort of creaky, knocky, noisy, but more to the, it's more because I've only driven it three or four times. And I'm still listening out for what might be happening um, and I don't know it very well not like my MG where I know what the noises are and I know uh, which noise means stop immediately which noise means something's about to go wrong and which noise you just ignore and you think yeah that's just normal driving a classic car um, so um, I took it to see somebody about getting some new um, seatbelt anchor points top anchor points welded in Unfortunately, it's a local guy, he's about two miles from my house, and he says that he can get them uh, welded in um, in just a few hours, but he can't, this is what, December now, it's just, we're just going to December, into December, but he can't take it in uh, until January. Now by then the roads will have been salted like crazy, so I don't really want to be out driving it uh, then. But, um, but I'm going to get that done uh, and, and get him to check over the other anchor points. Uh, so I've got the seatbelts now, I'm going to get those fitted in. I'll post on Instagram where I got them from and how much they were. Um, and once I've got those fitted, I'll feel more comfortable about driving it. But also there's a couple of other things that I need to do. The window winder um, oh, is broken on the... I put on pointing passenger side of this car but it's the driver's side of that car uh, so I want to get that done and then I can hopefully just start using it it needs the timing still doing it needs a tune-up uh, I might do that myself so basically what I did was um, when I put the electronic ignition and uh, new distributor
lift cap, rotor, plugs, heating leads, all of that stuff together. Obviously the distributor was just loose, vacuum and advance was stuck. I've, I've sorted those things out. Um, but when I first turned the key, it, it just wasn't firing, nothing was happening. And I thought, oh God, I'm gonna have to call somebody out to get it going. Um, so I just, I guess you just have to be methodical. So I just turned the distributor, I didn't have anybody helping me, so I turned the distributor a little bit, went and tried it again, turned it a little bit, tried it again, and eventually it fired up. And then I twiddled it for probably, I would say five minutes, just getting it so it wasn't spluttering. Um, and once it wasn't spluttering, because uh, I didn't let it warm up, I, um, I took it to this garage. I, I drove two miles away. Um, and it kind of it revved better, uh, accelerated better, it made a little bit less noise because I'd uh, tightened up some tinware. All the tinware is loose. Um, and all the light, half the lights didn't work, so I've got those working apart from one, the front left hand side one, which when you indicate uh, left, it uh, the, the side light flashes as well, which is uh, a bad earth somewhere. I don't know. Um, so there's all sorts of wiring issues and um, the other thing was, you know, we did get the lights going. Uh, the other thing is the horn, I need to order some more. And this is, I don't know what the left hand gauge is, it's some kind of outside temperature gauge, I think. Um, because there's a thick wire that's not really covered, it's just wire running down to the front of the car and it's just hanging down at the bottom and it's coming off that gauge. Uh, so I need to work out what that is. Um, and that's it really, that's the, that's the update. Uh, but the thing I'd say is, on a car like that, I am not somebody who likes to get their hands dirty. I'm not somebody who, hang on, I think an opportunity is coming up. does mean that you've got the 
there's an opportunity to go and buy something and you can it does mean that you've then got the means to go and buy something and keep it on the road and enjoy it and get to know it a little, a little bit better but it's it's the enjoyment bit the enjoy, that's the most important bit nobody enjoys forever tinkering with something and everybody keeps telling me oh oh it's a classic car you'll forever be tinkering with it no i won't because once you've got it set up right you can just jump in it and enjoy it my mg got set up right about nine years ago and since then every summer i've been able to just jump in it even though it hasn't been fired up for three four five months just get in there start it up and enjoy it so I'm hoping that I'll be able to get the Porsche to that kind of level. I still really want the um, Renline roof rack, uh, which is super mega expensive. It's like £900. Um, I want the um, steel wheels still. I'm going to look out for those, but I'm, I don't hold out much hope of getting those. I'm not going to spend stupid amounts of money on them because I can't afford it. Um, but what I would like is so while I've got the Fuchs wheels on it, which are proper Porsche 911 Fuchs wheels, um, I need the centers. And thankfully, someone on YouTube who saw a video sent me the part number, told me which ones I need, and brilliant, thank you, uh, because that's helped me out. And there's, I've got loads of ideas from people on Instagram, on YouTube, that have helped me out. It's probably three or four things that I've been, I've been able to just apply straight away and it's made a difference. I've been able to do something quickly rather than research it forevermore um, and, not, and not get a result. So that's made me really happy. And um, I should be asking right at the beginning of videos, please subscribe because I want more people to reach out to me, tell me what they're doing. Uh, and there's so many people buying 912s and importing them and uh, getting them fixed. Um, it's, it's amazing. and. Some people are just getting them for such bargainous prices. You know, you might get one that needs quite a bit of work, but if you're prepared for that, or you know somebody who can sort it out for you and it's affordable, brilliant. My problem is that I want instant gratification. I want something that I can jump in and drive. It hasn't happened this time. Not like it did with this 996. Um, also, I feel a bit weird. I feel like when it went for an MOT, someone's adjusted the height of the seats and I can't adjust it back. I feel like I'm sat really tall. Um, I don't think I am. But I feel really tall. Um, but that's what I would say. Get a car that you can start enjoying quite soon, unless you're the tinkering type, which in which case you don't need me to sell you anything because you'll know stuff. People of the tinkering type, they know more than me. Um, and, and these videos aren't for them. Um, because they know what they can handle, they know what they can get, they know how quickly they can get it on the road, um, they know how much stuff's going to cost, how, uh, how much stuff they can do themselves. So all of that, um, it, it means that they're more likely to be able to pick up a proper bargain and get it on the road, whereas I've spent quite a lot of money and now I'm hoping I'm not going to be dealing with rust issues forevermore. Uh, but once these seatbelts are in, I'll be so pleased. Um, and we'll be up, I'll be updating you very soon on what's happening next. Although things will slow down. You'll hear less and less about the 912. Because it's winter, I'm not driving it, but I am doing stuff. I am buying stuff, fixing stuff, uh, but you're more likely to see stuff on Instagram where I'm um, posting things about um, about little things that I've done or things that I've bought. Um, yeah. So I've got a couple of things, so I'll, I'll post stuff about, um, I'm going to order the horns because uh, it's currently only got one on there. Um, and and the, the seat belts, uh, I'll post which ones they are and how much they cost. And hopefully, 
hopefully I'll be able to get some photos on there of what's broken. It, it's not actually, like, it's not where a big crust of a chunk of the car has come off and it's all just rusted to hell at the anchor point I would like it to be. Um, it's basically, it's like the weld has come away, a bit of water has got in between what it should have been, where the weld should have been, and it's, when I've twisted it quite hard with a spanner, it just came off. Um, so, and, and I spoke to the guy I went to see today, um, I need to ask him actually whether I'm allowed to say who he is or where he is. Uh, <clears throat> but, um, I asked him about the pillar. And he said, look, the, the best way to do it is to get a piece of a car where it was meant to have the, um, the seatbelt anchor in the pillar. And he said, you know, he wouldn't be comfortable cutting a bit out and just making something for it. Uh, he could, but he said, you know, you would drop out the glass, it might not fit back. Uh, but if you had a piece of the car, then um, it would be different. And I'm not going to do that because I don't know where I'd get that from. I've had a quick look. And there's actually nothing really available. Um, so it's just going to be reinforce the bits at the back. Oh, I've also bought some rear seat seats for it off eBay for £49. They're crusty as hell, but I've got the structure of them. Any, you know, I, I tried to buy some which were £250, £300, and uh, they were in a similar condition, but down far enough so they would need reupholstering anyway whereas these oh, 49 quid I can't really go wrong um, so I'm waiting till those arrive I'll post some pictures on Instagram of those um, I think that's it um, for now I'm, I'm hoping I'm soon to be able to do something a bit different I've just realized it's getting dark and you can't see you probably can't see me because this camera is an Lamborghini event store but um, hopefully I'll do something different, I might go and test drive something. I've been saying that for as long as I've had this YouTube channel, but um, a lot of people have asked me if I'd like to collaborate um, on something, and do you know when you feel like, is that me? Because I've got no real audience, and uh, these people who have reached out say, you know, I look at I look them up and they've got sort of 10,000 subscribers and up and I always think, why, why would you want to, why would you want to collaborate with me? Um, that's what I think. And then sometimes I feel, oh, this is somehow fake. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know whether I should or not. But, um, but I'll give an update on that, whether I do anything or not, or uh, what happens with the car, what happens with this car, this car, I'm just going to use it. I need to drive it more. Um, but the, this car is just going to be, I'm not sure what else, what other content to do with this car that I can put out there. Um, because the drive's okay, touch wood. Um, there's um, nothing really that needs doing on it. From I need to keep the tire temperatures right so I can enjoy it properly, and that's about it, really. There's literally nothing else that this car needs. It's all about the 912. I need to get that working right. And recently, all of the nice to have stuff, like the, the I want some fog lights, I'd have to wire those up, um, the roof rack. Uh, the sensor caps of the wheels, the steel wheels, all of those things are pushed to the bottom of the list because I'm going to get the prop lights working, I'm going to get the horn working, uh, I need to do some rust proofing and the uh, smugglers patch thing. Um, but I have been thinking about air conditioning. There's a UK company that makes electric air conditioning from classic Porsches, but it's from something like 1974 onwards. So you'd have to do a lot of hacking to make it work for a car like the 912. So I need to I need to think about. But it's also so much money just to buy the kit. It's like three and a half grand or something. And you'd have to. There's a guy called on 
YouTube who's doing it for his classic 911. Um, so he's having to do quite a lot of fabricating. See, I don't do fabricating. Um, so he's doing quite a lot of fabricating because a lot of the bits go in places that the 912 can't accommodate. Like, you know, in the wheel well. Wheel well. Under the wheel arch. From wheel arch. Um, when, when there's a battery box for the 912. So there's things in the way. Um, and also I don't have that money. So that's something that's going to have to wait a really long time. Along with the roof rack, along with all these other things. You know, unless I win the lottery. And winning the lottery would mean I'll, I'll, I'll have bought a ticket. buy a ticket um, so I need to do that and the car the 912 sits a bit too high as well at the back um, and I think that just needs to settle I need to use it um, but the weather is going to get wet and colder you know, over the next week or so so yeah it's so just watch this space there'll be more stuff coming uh, I need to edit the hell out of this video because this is so much rambling and I don't want it to be a really long video Okay.